Hello and welcome back to Sip and a Smoke. Welcome back. I'm Rick. This is Tomas. Today I am having a Deanston single malt Highland Scotch. A uh, rather peaty scotch. It's going to be pretty good. With a Sweet Jane. Personally, one of my favorite cigars. Really? Mm -hmm. I've never had one. Uh, we were just talking about the, uh, the Deadwood Tobacco Company and in uh, Deadwood, South Dakota. I've actually been there, but I've not had the cigar. Uh, so I'm, I'm eager to try it out and see what it's like. This is a, so this is actually, oh, this was available only in Sturgis for the longest time, about three to five years ago. Three to, no, about three or four years ago. Um, I found this cigar and I have been smoking it on a regular basis since then. It's a beautiful blend of sweetness on the outside and a kind of a cherry, uh, almost like a pipe tobacco. I know everybody's had that one uncle that always had a pipe that it was like some kind of cherry flavor going on. We all had that uncle or cousin or, you know, somebody who smoked that when we were kids. That's what this reminds me of. Well, it, I'm pairing it with the uh, Deanston Highland Single Malt Virgin Oak. Uh, it's going to be a little bit less peaty. Uh, do you know what virgin oak is, the differences? I do not, actually. Well, um, one differentiator for bourbon, for example, uh, is that you have to use new oak for each barrel. You cannot reuse it. I mean, every other type of spirit that does aging in barrels, they can reuse their barrels. It doesn't have to be a virgin barrel. So virgin oak refers to the fact that that barrel has not been used previously so they're charring it and, uh, and it's brand new oak oftentimes those uh, different companies that do use virgin oak or even bourbon companies once the barrel has been used once they'll sell it off uh, primarily to tequila companies really uh, tequila even wines now uh, are aging in scotch barrels bourbon barrels um, things where they want to use it just the one time so um, that's kind of differentiated between what you're having there and what I'm having. You will have experienced previous um, vintages through that barrel and absorb some of those flavors. Whereas this particular one is going to have a lot more sharp, sweet notes that you're going to get from that virgin first use oak. So, hmm. so I'm eager to, to, to pair it with the Sweet Jane. Nice. So this cigar uh, started up in Sturges, was only allowed to be sold in Sturges for the longest time. And then it's only recently been allowed to be sold outside of there. It's uh, all, it's actually quite difficult to find these sometimes. Yeah. So, again, as I like to do, I use my punch. And Tomas likes to bite the tip off. I'm, I'm low maintenance when it comes to cigars. I understand. Yeah, the cool thing is, like, these ones here have that fully wrapped end on it. Mm -hmm. So you got to get a real good burn through the wrapper that, that wraps around the end there. That's what he's talking about right there, that full burn, or that fully wrapped. All the way through the foot. Yep. I like that because it tastes. The draw is cigar. Uh huh. Um, but it's got that cherry. A little bit of flavor. a sweet flavor to it, but not significant to where it's just like this is a flavor to that. This is yeah. a vanilla or a honey or a cherry. Yeah. It's just a hint. It's something in probably just barely a little bit and blend it into the filler and then the tip on it they dip it and it's got a nice little sweetness on your lips i like that yeah uh, this again one of my favorite cigars i absolutely love this cigar i can smoke this any day of the week uh the sweetness on it it's probably one of the sweeter wrappers that you'll ever have that i've ever come across um the filling on it is, it, it seems almost like pipe tobacco to me. Yeah. Um, but it's 
just absolutely, it, it leaves a nice film in your mouth where it's just the creaminess of it and everything. <clears throat> uh, and then pairing it with the, the slightly bitter, well, not bitter, but peatiness of this scotch is, yeah. always makes me happy. You know, I'm getting from the one I have here with that uh, virgin oak, I'm getting a little bit of sharp oak flavors um, from the fact that it's virgin oak. It's probably not a heavily uh, charred oak, it doesn't seem like. It's probably a low-level char because it has those kind of fresh, sharp flavors to it. And I think the sweetness of this is probably bringing that out a little bit more, uh, which I like. It's, again, it's a good pairing. You want a lighter flavor. You want a little bit of sharpness to offset, a little bit of bitter to offset the sweet. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty good pairing. I, I enjoy it. So far, so good. Yeah. Um, you know, I have never been able to say anything bad about these. I have dealt with many a people that I will turn them on to these because they've never tried them before, and I highly recommend them to everybody. Uh, there are actually three different types from this line, this Deadwood line. Uh, this is the Sweet Jane, then there is the Fat Bottom Betty, and the Crazy Alice. Now, if you go in line of which one is the sweetest, uh, the Crazy Alice is the least sweet. The middle one would be uh, Fat Bottom Betty, and then right after it is Sweet Jane. Sweet Jane is absolutely one of the sweetest cigars you will have. But it's so smooth because it doesn't really leave that ashy aftertaste that you get out of some sweet cigars. Mm -hmm. This one just leaves a nice film in your mouth that uh, when you take your scotch, it goes perfect. Yeah. So if you noticed, we've been drinking our scotch every time, our, our whiskey, uh, on the rocks. Uh, some people prefer to have it neat. For me, uh, some of these scotches tend to be a little bit higher alcohol content, so for example, this one here is a 46.3% alcohol by volume, which would put it at a 94.6 proof. Uh, that, that might be a little hot for uh, drinking neat, especially at kind of a room temperature. Uh, a lot of people will drink it scotch with water and uh, put a little bit of water on it. There's nothing wrong with that. Actually, uh, you go to Scotland or even Ireland, they actually recommend it mm -hmm. because that will help open up the pellet and the uh, the bouquet of the, of the whiskey itself. Every one of the scotch parties I've been to, we, they actually hand you a bottle of water mm -hmm. uh, and then they'll give you the one ounce shot of scotch. Yep. And, and you so you can just mix water. a little bit into it, yeah. It makes it a little bit more pleasurable of experience. It's not hot. It's not going to um, overwhelm your cigar and, or overwhelm your pellet. A lot of times people will kind of destroy their pellet by having a hot some scotch or something that's a little bit too hot for what they're used to um, and then you won't really be able to taste the flavors of, of the, the cigar or the whiskey or how they pair how they match up so um, I, I like it on the rocks I, I like it when the ice melts a little bit gives a little bit of water makes it easy to drink you're not powering through it that's how I like it uh, actually for me I will drink it on the rocks, especially if it's a peaty scotch. Uh, cuts down a little bit on the peat. You go with uh, Lafroy, I've got to have a little bit of ice yeah, in it. Lafroy's. Lafroy is one of those ones. I absolutely love Lafroy, but I've got to have some ice in it, yeah. something to cool it down and to, to take away a little bit of that peat because that will get you if you're not careful. Yeah. Um, However, if you go with something like Four Roses, I will definitely take that without. I will drink that straight just by itself, man. It's I'm more of a tequila neat type of person. <laughs> I'll drink my, my Reposados, my Añejo tequilas uh, neat at room temperature. That's what I'm used to with tequila uh, or the margarita. But, uh, but for the most part, with, with the whiskeys, I tend, personally, I tend to like a little bit of ice. Uh, and, and some let it melt a little bit just to kind of open up the pellet. That's that's how I have always done it. And so, but, uh, but there's no right or wrong. It's a matter of again, like with cigars, a matter of what you like. And uh, something else to consider when you're drinking Scotch whiskeys or or um, 
even bourbons, uh, the age designation. There's a lot of blended whiskeys out in the market. There's a lot of single malts in the market. And they have different ages on there, a 12 year old, 18 year old. Uh, and, and many of you already know this, but the, the age designation refers to the youngest uh, scotch in that blend. If it's a single malt, then it's 12 years old. If it's a blended whiskey, it's 12 year old. That means that the youngest blended into that is 12 years old. By law, that's a regulation that's required. Um, and then there's some that'll say blue label or green label with no age, age designation. Um, Johnny Walker being one of them. And uh, particularly, that's a hard one for me. I mean, if, it, again, if you like it, you like it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's uh, all up to you. At all. But just something to consider as you're picking out your scotches, as you're going into your whiskeys and trying to learn more about it, that's something to consider about um, the aging process. Um, I prefer she was 18 year old because the youngest in there is 18 year old, but it's a blend. So the oldest whiskeys can be up to 25, 26 years old, um, but the majority has to be, is 18 years old. So that's why they have to put the 18 year old designation. It's a minimum age designation. And so this particular one here uh, doesn't seem to have an age designation on it. So, uh, so it would appear that uh, this is a young whiskey and uh, I can't really tell how old that particular whiskey is. So I'll have to look into that and kind of research it a little bit and find out a little bit about that. Um, oftentimes some distilleries are using wood chips to age their whiskey and give it the taste of an age of an aged whiskey or give it the color of an aged whiskey because by law they can't add artificial colors in some in some whiskeys. Canadian whiskey, a blended Canadian, you can add artificial colors, for example. Uh, so I'm assuming, based on the light color of this particular whiskey, uh, it's a very young whiskey, and uh, it's possible that they could have used wood chips to kind of help age the process, speed up the aging process. But uh, but don't take my word for it. So I got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, can you explain to everybody what the difference is between scotch and whiskey? Well, there is no difference because all scotch is a whiskey. Scotch refers to its origin of being from Scotland. Um, just as much as bourbon is an American whiskey, um, all, all scotch is whiskey, but not all whiskey is scotch. Um, there are different rules, regulations, um, production requirements that are, are instilled in the distillation of scotch, bourbon, Tennessee whiskey, uh, Kentucky whiskeys, whatever it may be. But, uh, but based on those regulations is what categorizes it as a scotch. Now a single malt scotch refers to the fact that it's made from a single malt grain. So ha you know, it could be uh, wheat, it could be uh, rye, it could be several different grains uh, to choose from and it'd be single malt, one grain, which defines it as a single malt whiskey. Uh, a blended whiskey, a blended scotch, means that it's a blend of finished single malts. So um, Chivas, for example, has the largest library of single malt scotches, and they take those different finished single malts, blend them together to get a unique taste profile. And they're able to be a little bit more consistent uh, from vintage to vintage or year to year of production to be able to keep that you get that profile consistent whereas a single malt uh, people like to collect verticals they'll do a 92 and a 99 and a 05 or whatever it may be and notice differences and variation in the pro pro profile because you're using that one grain and however it uh, is yielding flavor wise for that vintage uh, will change because climate conditions soil conditions all these different vari variances, variables that can cause the grain itself to differ from vintage to vintage will also cause the whiskey to change slightly from vintage to vintage. Um, you're starting to see a lot more of those vintage um, scotches, uh, whiskeys, bourbons, things like that because of that reason and people are collecting them as verticals. Really? Absolutely. 